What I'm going to talk about today is oil pumping and oil return in a refrigeration compressor. So when a compressor runs, it's natural for some of the oil to go out through the piston or scroll or whatever it is and out into the system. It's part of the lubrication of the compressor. It's not something that's good necessarily because any oil that's in the system reduces the effective efficiency of the refrigeration system because it displaces refrigerant with oil. But they do do it and the oil returns to the compressor. The problem we run into is when it doesn't return for some reason. It goes out into the system and stays there. So, we're going to talk about that. Let's look at the refrigerant in the different parts of the system. At the discharge, there will be a little bit of oil. Now, there's not a lot of oil goes out of these things. They're not designed to move a lot, although scrolls seem to move quite a bit. The refrigerant and oil moves out as hot gas. Okay, it's a very dense, high-pressure gas. It's pressurized to a high pressure. Now, the, the oil that's in that gas is going to keep moving because that gas is very condensed. It's squished together real tight, lots of molecules there. They're going to push that oil with it. Well, the first place it goes after it leaves the compressor is goes to the condenser. Well, the condenser desuperates and condenses the gas and then subcools it. Well, once it condenses into a liquid, the refrigerant mixes with the oil, so it will stay in uh, suspension in the oil. It won't, there won't be any low spots or anything like that to keep oil once it's made into a liquid. So pretty much from the discharge to the condenser and the liquid line, there's no problem with oil coming back. Where we get into the problem is after the expansion device. When the expansion device uh, you know, lowers the pressure on the gas, it does a couple of things. Number one, it uh, makes it less dense. Number two, of course, it does, it cools it off. But when it's less dense, it's more likely to leave the oil behind. Now, it's, it's changing from a liquid into a gas in the evaporator. So as it goes through the evaporator, most of the evaporator will probably still move because there's a lot of liquid still there. That's a mixture of liquid and gas. So it'll kind of flush it down. But when it gets to the end of the evaporator, it's all gas there's no liquid left. And so the only way it can get back is by the density of the gas and the speed that the gas is moving at. Now, we're gonna put us a happy suction line on here, great big one. And gas is moving through like this. And it's going towards uh, the suction line and into the intake of the compressor. Well, there's going to be oil. The oil will stick on the sides of the pipe and lay in the bottom and stuff like that. And it'll kind of go like, like that down there. Well, let's say everything's normal. I've got the proper refrigerant charge and everything in this thing. Well, there's lots of these little dots. All oh, the little bits of this. Uh, of gas coming back, it's going to pick this oil up. It's laying on the bottom, some of it's still entrained in the gas, and that is going to carry that oil along. It's moving fast and it's fairly dense. Okay, what happens if I run low on charge? At that point, I'm going to lose a whole bunch of these things. They're going to kind of go away, and I'm not going to have as many of them in there. And I'll just have dots like that. Okay, now at that point, it's not dense enough 
to get this oil to move. And see, the oil is going to get thicker and thicker on the bottom of this section line. Any low spots, it's going to lay in there. So when my refrigerant charge gets low, that makes this less dense. And so the conditions inside this suction line make it so that I can have oil trapped here. Like I said, bottom, you know, bottom of the line, where the line goes up, you know, if there's any little uh, dips in it. It's all going to catch in there and it's not going to move back as it should. Another thing can cause the same situation is if you have a TXV that is incorrectly set. If the superheat is too high on the TXV, it's going to have the exact same uh, situation in this suction line. There's not going to be enough refrigerant in there to cause, essentially to cause a wind to move the oil back. Uh, I've seen cases where you come on a TXV that is out of adjustment, especially on big industrial ones, you adjust it to the correct superheat and it'll flood the compressor with oil. And perhaps over the years with this TXV being adjusted incorrectly, oil started staying out in the system. Somebody noticed maybe there's a sight glass, maybe there's a low oil uh, cut out on the compressor. They say, well, gee, we're running out of oil there. So they add more oil. And they keep adding oil because it, it uh, tends to go down. So when somebody comes along and adjusted the TXV to the correct setting, and made that gas dense enough that it would pick up the oil, that compressor could conceivably be slugged with oil because there's so much of it comes back. That's one of the issues with that. Most of this, if it's in a residential situation, it's usually because of low charge, and that can cause a compressor failure, as it did in the one I showed you in the video on compressors. That one is linked here in this video. In any case, if I do recharge it, the oil will come back. So if I get to it before the compressor fails and I recharge it, uh, the oil will come back. I've had that happen. I've had it log my uh, gauge sets with oil because uh, where I had my taps on there, it was picking up oil. So that's what it is. It's all about the density and speed of the gas. So don't be surprised. If you come to a lock rotor compressor and find out the unit's low on charge. Okay, that's it on that one.